everyone. Welcome to the Casino Rama Grill Room, and we have a very special treat for you today. I'm here with the reigning Mr. Olympia, Jay Cutler. Jay has won the past title four times, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic last three times. Jay, thanks for joining us here today, and i got to ask you, how did you originally get into bodybuilding? I mean, what was it when you were younger that you saw that made you want to do this? You know, it's a funny story because uh, I was actually, I believe, about 12 years old, and I picked up a magazine, a picture of Chris Dickerson, who was a former Mr. Olympia. He's a one-time champion, actually. And uh, I saw a picture of him, and I was 12, and I said, wow. I said, that's what I want to look like. So as I was a teenager, I got involved in sports. I played football, and uh, I played, I ran track, and eventually, uh, you know, I continued to read and pick up books here and there. And I actually saved up money, uh, $300, to join Gold's Gym in Worcester, Massachusetts, where I was from, and my 18th birthday, August 3rd, 1991. And I began my journey as a bodybuilder. And I really didn't know what that journey was going to be or what it was going to take, and I never dreamt it would be what it is. But I started lifting weights, and the goal to become bigger and look like that picture I saw when I was 12 And Gold's Gym is sort of the gold standard, isn't it? Because that's the one you always hear of in L.A. as well. That seems to be where a lot of people, you know, that get into bodybuilding, that seems to be where they come from. Well, Gold's Gym has that recognized name. I, I knew that there was bodybuilders that worked out there, and I knew if I wanted to learn how to lift weights, that would be the best place for me to go. So it was in a local area where I was, and, you know, I saved up enough money to go. And I joined the gym and I watched everyone. I kind of learned, and that's kind of what I began um, getting more involved and in, start looking at, you know, what it took to be a bodybuilder. And, and, and let me ask you, you know, before I ask that, one quick question about your past, because it seems a lot of people, you know, and this may be just me, but people that want to get in good shape and want to really be muscular, sometimes they were picked on as kids. Was that you, or was this just something when you were 12 and you saw it and you thought it was great? Or because I hear a lot of bodybuilders, when they were younger, they were picked on. Not necessarily. I was actually the youngest of seven kids, so um, I you got three, beat up on then. I got three brothers, three sisters, yeah. but I was fortunate enough. I worked on a family farm, and I worked in my brother's concrete business from 11 years old. So I developed a pretty solid physique. I yeah, was pretty lean and muscular. Stuff, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people that saw me at that age, I always looked at 13. I looked 17. Yeah. I had more of a muscular physique, and I think that's also why it led me into bodybuilding because. Yeah. I was more muscular than anyone. I was always the strongest kid in high school, um, in grammar school, and uh, I already had a very solid muscle frame when I actually started lifting weights at 18. Well, let's talk about your 18 frame, when you're 18 years old frame to now, because I'm sure it's more than just a bunch of powder shakes and doing a, and doing a lot of leg curls. I mean, what is it that got you to be in the shape you're in now? Like, what, what are the steps and what's the, that you do that's unique compared to other people? Well, bodybuilding is looked upon as you spend hours and hours in the gym. Which is true, but people think we train eight hours a day. But, and honestly, it's the diet that puts you to the elite status, someone like myself. I've been training now for 19 years, and I eat seven to eight to 10 meals a day, um, a lot of proteins. I mean, I can eat up to five pounds of meat a day pretty easily. And my body weight right now, I mean, I compete at 260 pounds. In the off season, I weighed, you know, between 280 and 290. Um, so it's just eating every two and a half hours. And the consistency of year in, year out of doing that. And, of course, I use the protein shakes. I endorse Muscle Tech, which is one of the biggest supplement companies. They're based out of Toronto. Um, I've endorsed for them with almost 10 years. And uh, it's just... That must just be un unbelievable discipline. Uh, because, I mean, that's one problem I see with people. You know, they say, you've got to eat a lot of small meals throughout the day instead of one big one. And most people can't do that. You've got to eat seven or eight times and follow this regimen, as you were saying, just year after year. I mean, what kind of discipline does that require? It's extreme discipline. It's uh, pretty much living in a box for the four months, of course, training for the show. But you have to be consistent. I mean, that's, that's the thing is we're paid to be bodybuilders. I'm one of the most highly endorsed athletes. So I make a living at doing this. And when I'm not training and I'm not getting ready for competition, I'm on the road traveling, doing guest appearances, which I'm here this weekend doing an event here. And uh, I do that every weekend from October 1st until June 1st when I start training for the next Mr. Olympia. Well, I want to talk about the events. I want to talk about Mr. Olympia. But I, I do have to ask, obviously, anyone watching the show, anyone who's not involved with sport is going to look at you, and especially with all the headlines in baseball and football, and just wonder about steroids. 
How prevalent are steroids in your sport and how much have they played a part, if any, in terms of you obtaining this body? Because you're in a unique position here. Your body, like to say you're in the top 1%, you know, would be an insult to you. You're in, you know, way higher stratosphere than that. Yeah. And it makes people wonder. Of course, people are going to look at us and they think, I mean, they thought that when I was a teenager because I was always bigger than everyone else. But genetics plays an important role in what we do in having the frame and the, obviously the muscle definition. Working on the farm, the concrete, I mean, obviously that's going to help. All that stuff. But, you know, in our sport, of course there's steroids, I mean, that guys use. But we have a drug testing program now that's very, It's. I mean, it's random drug testing. It's not as strict as some of the other sports because... The problem we have that lies in bodybuilding is we're um, athletes that are able to use supplements such as creatine, uh, mm -hmm. testosterone, tribulus products. And some of that's not allowed in the Olympics and, some, and, and creatine had problems with baseball with that. We can use a lot of these products, which gives us a very much an edge to build muscle. And that's part of our income is endorsing those products. And a lot of those, those supplements can work a lot like steroids. They're not steroids. They're all legal. Everything's approved and but you have definitely have an edge using those products and someone like myself that's been matured and using certain products over the years i mean there's been stuff some stuff that has been banned there's been stuff uh that you know has come about that's even better and i have the best company behind me in developing products i mean i use several new products um that weren't available 10 20 years ago even when i started and i already had built the physique at that point by the time I, I mean, I gained 50 pounds my first year of training um, when I was 18. By the time I was 20, I was already this size. And people say, well, how do you do it? I can not lift weights from now until June and still stay 270 pounds. And people say, well, how is that done? That's just pure genetics. I mean, I'm just one of those larger genetic guys. Yeah. And how long can you maintain this? Because not just, I mean, the lifestyle with the eating and all the training and all the traveling, I mean, at some point, you know, I just wonder how long can you go on this way? I mean, you look at football or baseball, every sport has that age where they got to retire, unless you're Brett Favre. But what about someone like yourself in your business? At what point do you sort of have to hang it up? The unique thing about bodybuilding is the longer you do it, the better you actually become. Now, me being at 36, I'm at my peak of my career. Now, what's the peak? I say 36, 37, 38, 39. I mean, you're probably your best closer to 40 years old. Then maybe this starts tapering okay. off. But this is the years that you develop what they call muscle maturity, and it, it takes the years and years to build that dense muscle mass. And that's why I mentioned I cannot work out for six months and still stay the same size. Now, 12 years ago, if you asked me that question, I'd, I'd shrink down to probably nothing. Mm -hmm. But now that the muscle's been there for so long and the density has been built, what they call density is how thick the muscle actually is, and it's been there for so many years, it's very hard to take back off now. So in your prime, which are these years, your body's matured, it's just, it's in such a groove that, you know, it just takes a little fluctuation in the diet and a little fluctuation in the training cardiovascular to get into top shape, but it also sticks a lot more so you don't lose as much muscle mass. So let me ask you, is it, what sort of, when you, how does it affect you when you're on the street? Do you get a lot of people just looking at you, just in terms of day-to-day -day things that we would take for granted? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure you used to right now, but you still, you still must get some funny looks. You get a lot of looks, and but people admire because of my whole look. I mean, yeah. I have everything, you know, I kind of have the hair, and they recognize me because I'm featured in a lot of yeah. different bodybuilding magazines. I mean, I am Mr. Olympia four times over, so usually there's someone that might say, Who, look at that guy over there. And then there's another person that says, well, wait a minute, that's Jay Cutler. Mm -hmm. So I'm very recognized that way. But you get do get the looks, but sometimes people are afraid to say anything because they don't know what I'm going to say. Yeah. But well, I, I want to ask, and then I want to go to Mr. Olympia because I'm interested in this. I've seen, you know, I've seen it in clips on YouTube. I've watched it before. It's been going on forever. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day. What is it that... How is it that you won? Because you see other guys. Other guys are in great shape as well. And to the layman, they might look at it and can't tell what one person is doing to dominate someone else. Another sport, I can tell by points. What is it, uh, you know, that gets you over the top? Pretty much for me, what I have is a size advantage. I, they look at the wide shoulders, the tapered down into the waist, and, you know, the flaring legs. Um, we're judged on basically uh, conditioning, how conditioned our body is as far as body fat. Our symmetry, how... Every muscle flows together. You have a great upper body with great legs. You're not missing your calves and that thing. 
Um, and, you know, muscularity, how much muscle you actually carry, which I carry a lot because I'm one of the biggest guys. So you're basically judged on, you know, muscularity, symmetry, conditioning, and how that all is put together in one package. So, and how you display it, of course, how you go through your mandatory poses, which is seven or eight mandatory poses. You hit front double bicep, you hit a front lat spread to show your back, turn around to the backside, you know, you show your abs and thighs. So they judge on all those certain poses and they compare the guys and they say, okay, which guy looks the right way that we're judging to our standard. And for me, because I'm so big, so dense, so ripped, that's usually how I win. That's how I've been in the top two for about 10 years. Okay, now before we get to, I want to talk about the website and, and the movie. A couple quick numbers here. What's your body fat count right now? Right now, about 4%. 4%? You couldn't get to three? Well, I got to three last weekend. Okay, three. Well, yeah, you're at four <laughs> here. All right. And I got to ask, what's your bench? Uh, I've done 550 for two reps before. 550 for two reps. I can't even comprehend that sort of number here. So now you're, you're coming up. you got a movie that's in development, that's in the works, that you're starring in. Tell us a little bit what you can about Hercules. Yeah, Hercules now is uh, the current project I'm working on. Um, this film is going to be filmed uh, in the Detroit area. I'm working uh, as John Hercules in, in the film, and I'm playing a steel worker during the day. I'm a, a bouncer at night at a nightclub, and... Basically what's happening is uh, there's a young girl in the neighborhood where I live and I became like a father figure to this girl because the mom's um, actually got some drug issues and I become very close to this girl. Well, this girl's underage. She somehow gets in the club one night. Uh, she gets kidnapped and, uh, by this Russian mob. And of course, I'm trying to find this girl and I'm fighting all these different guys to try to get to the main guy to get this girl before... Uh, she's exported you for drugs and uh, prostitution, and my many tasks to get there is different ways um, I'm going about in the film to try to find her. And of course, we're working off the the Hercules tale, and I'm fighting all these different henchmen to get to her. And uh, you know, the, the story has a real twist at the end, but it's basically an action film where where I'm going after all these guys to try to, to free this girl and uh, and try to get her back and safely uh, back to her. Uh, environment okay well and again that's great for you i mean again sort of following the similar path on schwarzenegger i know this movie version of hercules very different than his yes. way back in the day but tell us about this weekend you're here in town what's going on jay cutler hits toronto.com by the way i feel bad for toronto if you're hitting him i what, what, yeah. what, what, what about a firm handshake but tell us about what the event's about um well i'm fortunate uh, a good friend of mine here valerio uh, mascarello he uh he actually we did this event before it was a huge huge hit uh to about two years ago where i come to toronto i do a guest posing seminar um which is going to take place tomorrow night and uh I'm going to actually get up on stage. I answer a lot of questions. Um, we'll have probably 600 plus people in the audience um, where, you know, it's a and a type thing. Um, I kind of tell my story of bodybuilding, how I got there, what I do, what kind of foods I eat, same kind of things we're talking about now. Yeah. And uh, pretty much, um, you know, answer a few questions. I do a guest posing at the end, so I show what my can body you, looks can like. You, can you just quick, I, I just quick to some sort of pose. I don't want you to give away this too a, much. This is a front dog bicep. Yeah. So we show the arms. Yeah. Okay, show the arms and lats. That's, that's and of course, you know, uh, then at the end I get to take pictures of people if they want. I have all merchandising I sell, which I sell at jcutler.com, my website. Yeah. It allows people to get up and close and personal to get a picture with me. And uh, it'll be a cool event. You know, it's, uh, oh. it's kind of unique. And, uh, you know, it's one that especially I come here one week after winning my fourth uh, title here at Mr. Olympia. And I get to see many fans here. And, and realistically, Toronto is one of the biggest fan capitals for the sport mm -hmm. of bodybuilding, which is amazing. So when I come here, it's a huge, huge deal. Perfect. Well, listen, Jay, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for telling us your story. And you know what? Good luck with your future endeavors. Enjoy Toronto and try not to hit us so hard. Thank you so much, man. It's a real pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's I come just before the snow and yeah, it's OK. I mean, smart, very smart. Yeah. Anyway, again, Jay Cutler, for more information, go to jaycutler.com. Thanks a lot. Have a good night, everybody.